In this training, you'll learn how to kickstart your real estate investing business in 2021 to ultimately help you get started right and make more money. I'm also going to share some market predictions, my top four real estate investing strategies, marketing strategies that will get you noticed, the tools, systems, and software we use in our business, and a getting started checklist. This is a jam-packed training with a questions and answers session at the end. Hey, my name is Chris Goff with REI Pro, and I'm passionate about helping you succeed in real estate investing. If this is your first time here, please click that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified of upcoming trainings like this one. All right, so I pulled this very first thing from Forbes. I just, it, I think it's a, maybe a good opening of what do people project 2021 is going to be like? So um, as I read this, read along with me. Uh, we expect sales to grow 7%, prices to rise another 5.7% on top of 2020's already high levels, which I think for a lot of people, that may be shocking for a lot of people. Um, so while we expect mortgage rates to tick up gradually, you know, they said that last year too. And then they kind of just floated, you know, so we'll see about that. But uh, sales and price growth will be propelled by strong demand. And that is a proven fact. We're already seeing that. A recovering economy and still low mortgage rates. Single family housing starts are expected to grow another 9%. So this is a whole new generation of people coming in that are buying homes. On the whole, the market will remain seller friendly, but buyers will still have relatively low mortgage rates and an eventually improving selection of homes for sale. So that is straight from Forbes. Um, and I did pick a lot of different things from different places and, and just taking our own experience and everything and putting it into one presentation. So if we look at it as a whole, I think we're pretty, pretty set up well for investing in real estate this coming year, which is really exciting, especially for people like us that have been in it forever, but people that are just getting started, this is going to be, if you're looking for that extra income, maybe that next, you know, job, so to say, this is going to be it. Um, I want to start with this because, and I know this may seem fairly basic for a lot of people, but real estate actually works off of this as well, supply and demand. So the more supply that we have of homes, of course, prices are going to go down because now buyers have more to choose from. When the demand is high, the prices go up, right? So as a real estate investor, we always say buy low, sell high. Now, real estate typically doesn't change overnight, but it does change in time, okay? So we have to look at this whole supply and demand, but we also have to understand, is there demand today? Or is there more quantity today? Or is everyone just kind of sitting around waiting for the next person, right? So I wanted to pull some charts and graphs to show you actually what's going on. So this is home sales for the last five years. Now this is, this is actually very impressive to look at. If we go back to 2016, 17, 18, 19, it looks fairly flat. And then obviously you start to see in 20, it, it spiked up and then it dropped, right? So COVID came in and everything just came to a standstill. But look what's happened ever since. This is crazy. Home sales have skyrocketed over the last five years. And this is just going back five years, okay? I wanna break this down by month of last year because you can't predict the future without seeing the history, right? So we have to understand what's going on, what happened, and then project what's gonna happen in the future. So if we look at January, February, now generally sales will tend to go up in the spring, right? But this is when COVID hit. So as you can see, it dropped all the way into May. But look what happened in June. 
July, August, September, October. Now, November, December is usually slow months for real estate. It's a, just a little bit of drop here, but still that's way above where we even started the year, which is absolutely amazing. And it's actually the highest since the last five years. And what does that say to us as real estate investors? Number one, if people were be, you know, losing their jobs and all of these bad things are happening and we're in a pandemic, how in the world are we up in home sales? It's people moving, right? People are buying, they're getting out of, you know, we always say getting out of the North and moving South. And that's exactly what happened. You know, that's this, interesting what I'm seeing these stats here, Chris, because I know in my local area, it's exactly what I saw really right around that July time frame. Things just really started to spike up and also saw price increases pretty dramatically in my area. That's right. And that's where demand is high, right? So price is going to go up when demand is high. When you have a lo you know, a huge quantity of property sitting out there for sale, prices are going to obviously drop. But this is this is really good. This is a very good sign. If you were an investor that bought in May, you could have already turned around and flipped this house and made a fortune. Just, just looking at this particular graph because the demand is getting higher and it's still going to climb this year. And that's going to be awesome for people. You got to get in. I mean, it, it, I know that sounds so simple, but you got to get into real estate because this is a trend that we haven't seen in five years. But I will say this usually happens after something dramatic happens. Okay. So I want to keep digging into some of these charts because this is all telling information here. So I was curious, you know, where, where's the top areas? I did pull this from realtor.com and they're explaining as the big tech companies are a huge driver for these top four cities that I'm going to give you, Sacramento, California, San Jose, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Boise, Idaho. So those are kind of the four top growth markets. That doesn't mean that's the best investment markets. That's just where you're seeing uh, more home sales right now at a very rapid rate. And a lot of this is being pushed by these big tech companies. I thought this was interesting because new construction tells a story. And this story is, is fairly simple. You know, well, if you think about we're in 2020, who in the world is, who's building in 2020, right? It's amazing how many new homes were actually built last year. And all new construction, I've gone through numerous different resources how new construction is actually going to be increasing this year. Now, there's a lot of factors. We're going to talk about some of those factors tonight. But if I just look at, look at 2005, remember that was kind of, you know, I thought the market peaked out in 2002 and I started selling everything. And I failed to realize from 2002 to 2005, everything like doubled or tripled. And they were building like crazy during this time. And what I wanted to show you is kind of look at where we are today in 2020, it, moving into 2021. I mean, we're going to get this another growth of new homes. You could see just from 2010 up to 2020. I know that's a 10 year span, but look at that growth over time. And they're expecting even more uh, growth in the new construction side of it. So, what is that going to do? New construction, obviously, you know, they're not building as fast as people are selling. People, you know, they're building, it's going to bring in more competition for the people that are selling. Okay, so, but right now the demand is high. As the quantity increases, the prices are going to start to drop. Okay, that's going to take time to do though but we're seeing this increase and we have to project it ahead of time so we can be ahead of, as they say, ahead of the curve here, right? Some of the factors um, that I want you to consider, there are more than these, but these are ones that 
I think is important, okay? Number one, obviously COVID, you know, we're in a pandemic and are people really thinking about investing in real estate? That's a, you know, a big question right there, right? What about job loss, right? So is, are people really thinking about getting into real estate? What about health? Divorces, you know, the moratorium with evictions and pre foreclosures, which we'll, we'll elaborate on. One thing I wanted to also point out is people are finding what I call other outs, other things to do. As you know, you know, a lot of things are shut down, um, depending on where you live in the country. But there's also a lot of businesses that have boomed. Okay, real estate is one of them. And I'm already, I've already shown you just what happened last year with sales, new constructions growing. But what other industries are actually booming? And, you know, I thought this was crazy when I heard this at first, but the boat industry boomed during this whole pandemic. I sold my boat during the pandemic. I sold it at basically full price. The guy drove five hours and he didn't even test drive it. And he paid cash. Just bought it and drove off. That was it. And we sold the jet ski the exact same way. The camping industry, the RV industry, People are finding other things to do. And what, that, what happened was those industries were just booming. Like when I sold my boat and I found out, oh my gosh, boats are like the hottest thing right now. I'm like, who's buying a boat during a pandemic? What? That's crazy. And you know, that's one of the things they say you should never buy, right? Uh, they say anything on wheels or it goes in the water, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> well, it's interesting you said that because I was looking at a boat and it was going to be like five months to get it because the one I wanted, there's nothing out there and you had to go right back to the manufacturer. Well, and that's the thing. Business is boomed. Real estate boomed, but you didn't really probably pay attention to it. You didn't see it if you're not in it. And that's the thing. I wasn't in boats until I wanted to sell a boat to find out that you couldn't even buy a boat because they're all sold out and people were basically handing you money to buy your boat. They didn't care. It wasn't even the boat they wanted. They, but there wasn't that much out there. That's called supply and demand. It's the exact same thing in real estate. More people obviously working from home. That changes so many things, guys. So many things. Some of those things we're gonna we're gonna talk about this evening. Okay, let's look at the foreclosures because to me this is a big one. Um, if you have not studied up on pre foreclosure investing, um, do yourself a favor and and you need to study up on this one. And and I'm not talking. People think, hey, if you're in real estate, you should already know this. No, most investors really don't know how to connect the dots with a pre foreclosure. Okay, you need to understand it. We have a great educational series in REI Pro that walks you step by step. Um, you, you need to understand this because there's a bunch of things coming this way. I'm going to share with you what has happened. So if you look at the recent, or the, this past year of people going in foreclosure, you can see the numbers January and then they start to tick down. This is where, you know, the banks stopped it or the government stopped the banks from taking the money, right? So the evictions, the pre-foreclosures, the whole moratorium, they were, no one's been collecting payments on these properties. So they've just been sitting there. Well, guess what's coming up? That's coming up at the end of the month, but FHA just announced they are extending all FHA insured mortgages till the end of February 28th. So this is just FHA. And what does that mean? Covers renters and homeowners living in a single family home with FHA issued mortgages. Okay, so these people have been in trouble for quite some time, most of them. 
Okay, as soon as this pandemic hit, people lost their jobs. They can't pay the rent. They can't pay the mortgage. Government stepped in and provided some help. Well, that help is coming to an end. But these people's problems are just going to begin all over again. And that's why we have to go out there and help these people. This is a huge business. This will be a huge business for the remainder of the year. And I really encourage you guys to understand this particular strategy. And we have all the tools and resources in REI Pro to help you with this. But you need to really focus in. You're looking for a home run strategy. This one's going to be it. Okay. And the best part is right now, if you start marketing these properties right now, by the time these you know, this help we'll call comes to an end is the time that they're going to need you. And that's the time that we step in. Okay. So I would be marketing these people right now. Now, with that being said, a lot of auctions aren't being posted, right? Some auctions are, some most are not. So we have to get these leads. We have to send out marketing materials, but this is coming up guys this month. Okay. So we need to check Obviously, we do provide a list of pre-foreclosures in Lead Pro, which is in REI Pro, and we need to start marketing these people right away. Now, one thing that we do in REI Pro is we actually show you the last 12 months of people that are in trouble, because if they've been you know, delayed in paying, well, we want to show you those lists too. So I would be marketing properties that went into even months ago because they're still in the same situation. They still have the same problem. Okay. It just doesn't disappear. These banks are going to want security. They've been without payments for months now and it, it's coming up. So really want you to pay attention to this particular strategy. Um, this is a good one. Um, that would be my my big strategy for the year. So what does all this mean, right? Well, I want you to look at it this way because this is a very unique situation that we're in. When the housing market is going up because of demand, which means the prices tend to go up because of demand, in combination with more owner situations because of COVID, when those two situations collide, I call it the perfect storm. Th this is the perfect storm. People said this back in 2008 when this happened, the whole foreclosure from eight to 10, that was the perfect storm as well. We're kind of back in that situation, but it's kind of unique in a way that things have really have come to a halt in a lot of places, but in other places, they seem to be growing. Um, like Bo said, you know, just even your house was very difficult to find the demand in the businesses and in the, you know, the, I would say the small business owner that's around you. These places are acting like, yeah, everything's normal. Yeah, you got to put a mask on or not in Florida. Um, I wear a mask personally, um, but, uh, you know, things are different everywhere. And I think you have to evaluate that. But at the end of the day, People that are in this situation, that's in every state, okay? And this is going to be the perfect storm for you guys. Just keep, you know, keep in mind, banks are getting ready to move forward on this whole foreclosure process, and it's coming up this month and next month. So um, we need to be proactive today in marketing those people. All right, so I'm going to give you my top four. These are my top four. Nobody else's, okay? So don't email me and say, that oh, That one doesn't work well for me. These are my top fours, okay? And the very first one is gonna be wholesaling. This is where I started. And, um, you know, it's still live and active today. And I'm gonna give you a few reasons why. This is gonna be great. And this is one reason motivated sellers who can't afford the cost of repairs. Obviously going through a pandemic you know, you find a distressed property where a homeowner's like, they can't, they can't afford to fix it up. It's going to be a good time for people to cash out. And that's where wholesaling is going to come into play. Fix and flip or what I call retailing. 
This is the perfect storm for retailing. Okay, so great for high prices and demand, and we're going to see more growth in 2021. So when you find that great deal, as if look at the wholesale deal, and demand is high right now, with prices increasing, that is the perfect storm for fix and flip, period. Okay, so and we're going to see even more growth in 2021. I would be finding these properties today. Next one, of course, one of my favorites. And I'm going to show you why here in a second. But great for sellers that need to move quickly. They need their mortgage payments covered. Or somebody that has low equity, but they need to sell because of their situation. You think about, we have so many owner situations this year. It's, it's crazy. This is also the perfect strategy for that buyer that needs more time to get their finances and their credit score back on track. What we are simply doing is connecting the two dots. And when we do that, and especially controlling property, this is a home run strategy. And it really doesn't matter what market we're in. Seller financing. This is great for landlords that are probably tired of tenants and not getting paid. Now, keep in mind, that's going to expire. But these landlords, a lot of them have gone through this pain for months. They're, they're probably done, right? I'm, they're trying to figure out why they're a landlord to begin with right now, right? Sellers Actually, that are behind. Yeah, go ahead. Say, well, I'm in the middle of a seller finance myself right now, but... Uh, and just talking with even some of my attorneys, there's a lot of places in the country where banks are not lending or the t they've tightened their belt up and a lot of people are having trouble selling. And unfortunately, people are having to move. And so I know there's certain states, I think Texas was even one of them, that he was saying, you know, what? there's a lot of seller financing going on right now because they've just got to have to just so yeah. they can move and do all these things. Yeah, they, they got to go quick. And um you know, being that the demand is high, there's not much inventory. So um, it, it's good to sell, but that doesn't work in every single area. And we have to understand those areas. But everybody in pre-foreclosure, this is the strategy you're going to use. Seller financing, right? Unless you're just going to cash them out. So seller finance is going to be perfect for those sellers. Also buyers that can't qualify for bank loans today or like in the future, right? So they have a high income but their credit score is not good enough to get a loan. This is so, these are my top four, right? So I want you to choose a strategy. And what I wanted to do for you guys was, I wanted to give you some pointers on where do you start? What strategy is best for you? So I wanna give you just a few of my concepts here. Um, I think wholesaling is great for beginners. It's where I started. Uh, no cash or credit is required. It's very low risk, if probably zero risk if you do the contracts right. And it's pretty much economy proof. You're always going to find these distressed properties, even in what we would call today a seller's market, we're still finding a ton of distressed properties for wholesaling. Fix and flip. I would say this is probably the intermediate to advanced. I know everybody watches flip this, flip that, you know, show. And hey, I want to go do that. But I would say this is probably not a strategy. I would advise somebody just getting started. Um, but uh, intermediate advance, obviously, you need access to cash. Potentially, you need good credit if you're going to get any loans. And this would be the highest risk strategy period. Okay. So um, not great for everyone, but obviously great for people that may be in the business, they've done a few deals and so on. Lease options. This fits everybody from beginners to advance. No cash or credit required. It's low risk. And to me, it's economy proof. It doesn't matter if we're in a buyer's market, seller's market, People will always have a problem out there selling. And I'm not talking about the majority. I think when I say that to people like, no, my area is booming. Look, I hear you, but people go through problems every single day. And this is where this strategy is, look, I couldn't sell it or I can't sell it for what I wanted. 
or I don't have enough equity in the house to actually sell it, or I can't afford a real estate commission and sell it. There's a lot of different situations here, but this is going to be great. Think about the person that needs to, you know, maybe lost their job and got a new job in a different state. Maybe they, their area, they can't sell it. Maybe they don't want to rent it because right now people are just scamming people getting in rent free. This is going to be a perfect solution for that person. Seller financing, I would consider this probably more intermediate to advance. But again, you know, I've had students that start here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, from a learning point of view, I would say intermediate advance. You would need some access to cash credit, not necessarily. And I would consider this maybe a medium risk. And then we have rentals, right? So that wasn't my top four. Uh, but this is obviously another way to invest in real estate. I think when I think when we're born, if you hear about investing in real estate, you either buy the house and rent it, or you buy the house, fix it up and sell it. Obviously, there are other ways of doing it. But what we're hearing is rental prices most likely are going to flatten out over the next six months. And you have to look at the housing market right now, and it just makes sense. People are definitely not going to be increasing rents in most areas right now. That would be foolish, right? But this demand is actually going to increase over the second half because a lot of people now are working from home, as we talked about. If you can work from home, you could literally live anywhere, right? So a lot of people are actually moving to where they want to live and still keep their job that they don't have to get in their car and drive to work and they can do that the convenience of their own home. So we're going to see this demand actually increase probably over the second half of the year. Okay. Now, could you buy something today and start renting it? Sure. Right. You can make money. If the numbers are right, you're going to make money in any one of these strategies, right? <laughs> Say that. All right, I want to give you some marketing strategies. And um, I really am the kind of guy that likes to keep things simple. I, I don't think that, you know, I like to make this part complicated for people. Um, my number one thing is direct mail, and especially with more people being at home. Direct mail is definitely the way I would go. It's the way actually I've been for the last 20 years because it works, right? You gotta be consistent with it. You can't just throw out, I'm gonna send out 20 postcards and I, if I don't get a call, I'm gonna be all upset or something, right? Direct mail is something you gotta consistently do. What I wanna challenge you with is this. I want you to be creative. You know, you don't have to necessarily just have the same old, same old. Be creative in your words, your design, your color. Whatever you may do, be different, right? Don't be the next guy or the next woman. Be different. And um, direct mail is, you're going to see here in, in just a few moments how not only has it been working, it's, it's going to continually work in your business. So REI Pro has got this whole platform already built, which is nice. Driving for dollars. I love this. If you are a beginner, you need to be doing this anyways, because I know beginners have a hard time believing that, oh my gosh, you know, these people would sell a house to me and I don't have any money, right? That's how I was when I started to like, so I started just finding these like shacks, you know, really, really dis distressed properties. I want you to learn your market by driving around. I want you to understand the different neighborhoods, the different price points, the different rental points. I want you to become familiar with what I call your backyard. Okay, now your backyard may be a big backyard, might be a small backyard, but start getting in your car because I think when you actually take action and do something, like in your car, just driving around looking for potential vacant properties. And I'm not talking about the typical 
tall grass, boarded up windows types of properties. I'm talking about the potential vacant properties that the yard is mowed, but there's no personal things around the house, like a hose or a plant, things that you would typically have at the property. I want you to try to find those properties, not necessarily the ones for sale, the ones that are not, and start working what I call your C neighborhood. That is the middle price range of your area and below, not war zone below, but in between the war zone and what that middle range is. And that's where you're going to find or at least see more opportunities from your vehicle. Okay, so driving for dollars, definitely. Pay-per-click advertising. If you go to Google, and Google's just one example, but you start to search for something and you see all these ads at the top, that's pay-per-click advertising, right? So we want to basically, you think about how many people are on their smartphone right now or on their computer, I think digital advertising is going to be huge this year. There are more people at home. There's, they don't know what to do with themselves. So I'm going to get on my phone or I'm going to look at this. Or I'm going to get on my computer. I'm going to look at that. I think you're going to find a lot more people are actually viewing these types of ads than maybe before. Okay. Before this pandemic, and this will also apply for social media marketing. And one of my favorites is actual video marketing. You know, I think YouTube's a, a great platform for you to help market your business. You could do two to three minute total videos, right? So I'm going to do a video for two to three minutes. You could talk about how you can help people, you know, avoiding foreclosure, how you help buyers, how you work with other investors. You're a bird dog, whatever it may be. You take all these different situations, divorces, behind on taxes, you name it. You do a short video on how you can help them. And if you keep doing that, you could then run pay-per-click advertising for that particular video. So when somebody is in trouble, what do we do? We go on to Google and say, how do I get out of this mess? And they're going to see your ad. And I think videos, videos, and I think Bo, um, you were telling me a couple months ago, how video marketing is actually has gotten huge. And it may be one of the biggest ways to market your business, your product, your service, and, and so forth. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's been huge, actually, along with pay-per-click. You know, I did, I've been doing pay-per-click since about 2007. And it's, it's just, you know, a lot of people have the ad blindness, they say, but you know what? It's interesting statistics. Uh, Years ago, it was like 80% of all the clicks in Google still came from the organic. But if that's true, how in the world are they making billions upon billions of dollars, right? So it is absolutely huge. Uh, and Chris is right. You record those videos. You can run the pay-per-click advertising, share it on the social media. The Facebook also has pay-per-click uh, pay advertising to share that video there as well. So there's just tons of opportunities. But, you know, going back to direct mail, Chris, that's interesting. You, you said people are just at home. They don't know what to do with themselves. I know like my dad, he's not going to go anywhere with the potential of getting COVID. Heck, his, his highlight of the day is going to the mailbox. <laughs> right. So, you know, I just want to throw that out there. I like to do a little bit of all of these strategies, you know, because they all work together. We have a whole series on that marketing, these working together. But if I had to pick one, I'm just getting started, you know, uh, direct mail would definitely be one I would choose. Yeah, it's simple to do. Um, we have the leads for you. We have the, the system already built. We even have the postcards designed for you. So, it's pretty simple to do and to get out some mailers um, and, and get it started. You know, I, I think that's, I think it's half the battle of just getting started. Get off the couch well, you're and taking let's go the do action. something. Yeah, that's the biggest problem is taking the action. Uh, and the people who do take action, how many times have we been in a, you know, a live event and somebody shows up saying, well, I'm here because I signed up for REI Pro. I sent out some of your um, postcards. I got three deals under contract and I have no clue what I'm about to do with them. So they drive five hours. One guy drove from New York somewhere. Yeah. I can't remember where we were at <laughs> just so he could figure out what to do with these three deals. So right. yes, that, that taking action is one of the biggest parts. 
if you know it, years ago when i got started in in the late 90s man somebody told me no you can make five ten thousand dollars show where where do i need to go just tell me what do i need to do i mean that's how i was you know i understand a lot of people may not be that way but you have to be that person right we gotta we gotta go you know we want to be an entrepreneur we want to have a bright future we want to take care of our family we want to leave a legacy but until we do something about it Nothing's ever going to happen, right? So, all right. So, I'm excited. Um, we have a special guest tonight, Bobby. which is really cool. Bobby Tyndall's with us, and he's one of my students. And I asked Bobby, hey, I want you to share your story. I want you to share some things that you're doing right now to have this success. And uh, Bobby agreed. And um, I said, absolutely, let's, let's do it tonight. What a perfect kickstart because I think, you know, a lot of people, they hear it from me. It's like, yeah, 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 you, you, you're you supposed to say that, right? But when you hear it, just, I want to say Bobby's average because I don't think he's average, but just the, the normal person out there that believes in this business. And when you hear his story, you're going to be like, you did what, right? The average person would think that way. But uh, his story is awesome, and uh, I want to introduce Bobby, if you can unmute and show yourself, and hopefully Bobby's still there, right? There he is. Hey, guys. Hey, Bobby. How's it going? It's awesome, man. Awesome. Love it. Well, are you ready to, um, you know, it's like sharing your life story here. <laughs> Sure. You know, let's, let's try this. Um, let's start from the top, though. You know, yeah, I, I, eight I years in the military. I did uh, 10 years working for myself. I sold my practice to a national corporation. And it wasn't long working for that corporation. And I decided that they really treated you like you were expendable. And I felt as though this was just not for me. I wanted to get back to my entrepreneurial spirit. So with the support of my wife and three kids, um, we basically moved across the country uh, back to South Carolina from the Midwest. Uh, we actually had a practice um, in Kansas. And we moved back to South Carolina where my roots were. And I transferred jobs to, to, to the other uh, office here in town in Columbia. And um, I told my wife, I said, we're going to give it two years. And in two years, if either one of us is not happy, we're changing up everything. We're calling it audible. And <laughs> I'm going to tell you, we moved here in 2018. And in 2019, I knew it was coming <laughs> because I actually signed up for uh, bigger pockets in, in uh, August of 2019. And I just started educating myself on real estate just doing everything I could possibly can to absorb the knowledge from all of the gurus out there. I mean, I followed things on Instagram and YouTube University. And, and then I ran across um, basically this property. And this particular property was for sale on the MLS. And I told my wife, I said, I think I know what we're doing. I'm not sure. Um, let's go for it. And so, of course, she was she was behind me all the way. She's like, well, I just believe in you and we're going to we're going to make it happen. So I called my friend who was actually a realtor. And I said, I want to put an offer in on this house. And uh, we got this uh, this contract on this house for sixty nine thousand dollars. This is an old farmhouse, had four acres of land around it. Uh, we were excited to just get in there and just fix it up and, and, you know, show everybody what we could do with the property because. You know, when you own properties your whole life, you don't, you fix them up, you live there, and then you sell them and move up to another house and so forth. So technically you're flipping anyway. It's just, you're living in it while you're doing it. So I guess it's house hacking. But um, this particular property, we weren't sure how much rehab it would take. So that was part of the analytics, you know, is, is looking at um, what, what's it going to cost? What can we offer? And what can we sell it for, you know? So we actually were asking our realtor friend, you know, things like, uh, what do you think? You know, we, we called the contractors and we had three different contractors come in and walk through the property. The rehab was everything from 60 to $80,000 in rehab for this place. And we were like, holy cow, that's, that's a lot. So 
we, we kept pushing our number up, pushing our number up. We, we had uh, ordered the inspection, went all the way through the process. We had a closing date set up, but our realtor came to us and he said, you know, if you're going to back out, you've already lost your money for the inspection, but you can back out this week if you need to back out. Because <laughs> he knew how scared we were because we didn't know what we were doing. And <laughs> I can tell you, I went ahead and told him right then. I said, man, we need to back out because I just didn't feel comfortable. You know, you had that gut feeling where you just don't feel comfortable. And I'm not, I'm not kidding, man. Within a couple of weeks, COVID came out. And when COVID came out, we both looked at each other and said, we need more training. <laughs> we need more time, you know? And so I was started doing research and I found REI Pro. And yeah, let me show you this graph. Real quick. You made this. Like, I was like, wow, yeah, this yeah, is pretty I, cool. I found REI Pro. And I'm going to tell you, man, the education through REI Pro was so simple. And I watched every video. And in your videos, you talk about, um, you know, watch them again because you might miss something. Well, I can tell you, I've watched all the old series. And then when you replace them with the new series here recently, it's just awesome. And so I want to say thank you to you guys, Bo and Oh, and Chris. well, thanks. You guys offer an exceptional platform. It does simplify the process for me. As you can see, I put together a timeline of events that happened in my life and in my family's life. And um, we signed up in June, around June 3rd for REI Pro. And we sat on our first webinar on the June 10th date. And at that point, I said, I got to have the upgrade version of this because I want to do more. I want to have more options. You know, I want to have more tools. And so I upgraded right away. Well, what's interesting in June 10th, when I got that upgrade and I just kept researching, I started sending mailers out right away. And I was sending out, you know, a few hundred mailers doing pre foreclosure searches in Lead Pro and whatnot. And I got a call on a, a lady who had a house on Bruce Road on August 20th. She signed a contract with me within two days of my, my discussion with her. I mean, it was amazing. She, she signed it. She said she had a realtor trying to sell the property. There's a sign still in the front yard. But she doesn't have a contract with that realtor, but she wants me to sell her property because she believes in me. So I drove all the way up to Greenville, South Carolina, and actually met with her that, that afternoon, and we sat and we talked about it. She came from North Carolina to meet me at this place, and we signed the contract. And um, so that was my first experience with an actual property owner, how we can help her. And so we went through that process with her, and um, then we got another contract on another one on Dairy Barn Road on September 9th. I mean, it just started rolling. I was like, okay, these mailers are working. Um, I actually drafted my resignation for my job on September 15th and put it in my draft folder on my Outlook mail because I didn't want to send it. I, I told myself when I close on this deal, I'm pressing the send button. And uh, sure enough, you know, I, I, I sent that um, right after I got my closing check from the Dairy Barn Road property, $15,000 on my first assignment wholesale deal. And, and you hit uh, the send button at the same time. I hit the send button. There yeah. was no um, doubt like, well, <laughs> I hit the we should just button, hang on. There was a lot going on. We had inventory and things like that I had to help out with. So I <laughs> waited until October 20th and I submitted the resignation. And they were like, what? What are you doing? What are you going to do? You know, you're, you're, I've been doing this 30 years. I was a clinician for a company making orthotics for uh, orthopedic braces and whatnot. And that's what I've always done for 30 years. I've never been in real estate other than buying my own houses and selling my own houses so it was a it was a scary thing that first deal back in uh in february but when i hit rei pro it just simplified the whole process i had the confidence and i knew that action inaction is the worst thing you can do so taking action was really important for me to, to and, and my confidence went way up when i knew the steps and i knew the process and I felt comfortable knowing there were a ton of people within this space that is doing exactly what I'm doing but for the first time. I mean, there was a lot of first, I think, so I was yeah. furloughed in April. And while I was furloughed, I was actually out driving for dollars and, and just looking. I would go to lunch hour. I'd have an hour at lunch and I'd drive for dollars and more 50 properties over my lunch hour. I mean, this is something that is become my obsession <laughs> because it's fun, you know? And so uh, my last day of work was November 20th. And um, we got a contract on another duplex in December. 
January, we got another contract on another uh, rental property. So these things are starting to really flow. I would say that my direct mail ma campaigns are probably working the most um, for me anyway. Uh, I started out with a pretty low number of, of mailers, but now I'm pushing out about 2,500 mailers a month. And well, what kind of results getting, are you getting, Bobby? Well, we're actually getting that? anywhere between six to 10 leads per week. And it just depends on the timing of when the mailers go out. I was just telling my wife, I said, you know, if Monday's my admin day, I got to be careful because if I send out a mailer on Monday, I'm getting calls Tuesday and Wednesday. And, and I got to make sure if I'm driving for dollars or if I'm out, you know, looking at properties, I don't want to be interrupting a, an owner telling me about their property to take another call. So I invested in some infrastructure. Um, Ring Central is the, the program I use for my phone system. And it goes out to all my team. So it's my wife and, and the realtor friend of mine. He now wants to help me out and uh, get part of this. So he's, uh, he's getting into some of this uh, wholesaling and, and side hustling, which is really incredible. And so you can see that my number there at the end um, is $46,450. And that's just wholesaling. Um, we still have 28 more properties to work. I submitted five offers, or actually two offers today. I got to submit three tomorrow. I'm looking at two properties, one at 9.30 and one at 4.30 tomorrow. So it's, it's fun, you know. The best thing I can tell people is don't be afraid. Um, take a chance, take a risk, because if there's nothing ventured, there's nothing gained. And it's a very true statement. You know, what I see here, which is interesting, when most people who are probably worried about their jobs or J-O-Bs would probably sit on the sidelines. I'm looking at your graph here going, I don't even know if COVID exists for you. You just went out there and said, heck, this is what I'm going to do. I don't know. COVID is just the thing that's sitting over there. So, okay. you know, kudos to you for taking the action saying, this is what I'm going to go do. And there's nothing that's going to stop me because, you know, it's, it's doing what everybody else is not doing. Right. That's going to get you to that success point. And so, you know, congratulations. I remember, in June, July, you know, because I, I sit behind the scenes a lot of times when Chris is talking and I'm, and I'm chatting with you, you know, uh, yeah. on these webinars. And I remember your name popping up week after week after week. Right. Uh, and then, you, you know, you were chatting privately with me sometimes about deals you've got going on. So it's awesome to, you know, hear this story of how that's progressed this year. Well, was that, that was the whole point. I, I want to, you know, I, I think being a teacher, you teach others to teach others. And to me, this is kind of teaching, I want to say, you know, that whole financial piece, it's, it's paving the way for other people too. And I, and I hope Bobby, you know, look, you're doing this through a pandemic. Yeah. Like the future is totally unknown, you know, and, and not only you sent your resignation in, you started something new. And it's a different way of life. But, you know, you, you said something earlier. I used the word addicted. Like I became addicted to it. Yeah. Like, okay, now what? Oh, we got to go. We got to go right. find that next treasure. Right. You know, I was right. like on a scavenger hunt every single day. You know, who's going to uh, find the next deal type of thing. And because I knew at the end of that, even though when I got started, you know, I didn't know what in the world I was doing. I knew that the book that I was reading said you should get paid. <laughs> and I don't know how I fumbled through it, but I did. I didn't know what I was talking about. I messed up the contracts. I didn't know how to evaluate properties. And, and, and I'm so glad, you know, you kind of mentioned a little bit about REI Pro. That's what it's there for. That's why me and Bo built the system was to help walk people through the process because it's actually understanding how to connect the dots. You could go to YouTube and understand a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but how do you put it all together? And that's hopefully what we're trying to do here. Well, you know, interesting, Pro. Chris, I'm looking at this timeline too, because, I, you know, I've heard some people in the past talking to us and saying, well, you know, do I need REI Pro right at the very beginning? I'll get that a little bit later. But, you know, just looking at Bobby's timeline here, he didn't have REI Pro. And then it's like when he got REI Pro, that's when everything accelerated. That's what we tell people. It's the tool you have to use. It's not, well, I'll get to it once I get a deal or two under my belt. I don't even know how you get the deal under your belt, you know, so to speak, because it's such a valuable tool. You got it. And that's when it really fast track for you. So. Oh, it helps you manage every property through the process. I mean, 
I, I, I've deleted, uh, well, I archived, I'm sorry, Bo, I archived them. <laughs> I know you like to, to archive and Chris likes to delete sometimes, but I archived the properties, <laughs> probably close to 25 properties today. So it's a system that allows you to go through and analyze every single property and every single neighborhood and know the analytics behind the numbers before you have to spend the money or reach out to the owner. And, and sometimes I'll, I'll send out a mailer and we'll get return mail. So then there's a whole process behind that too. So, you know, the marketing um, campaigns are wonderful. I mean, it's so simple to send out the mailer. The mailers are actually super inexpensive. Um, my realtor buddy said he pays almost 72 cents a mailer. And so for, for the cost of, you know, depending on of course where the price breaks are, you can send a ton of mailers out for a little bit of nothing. And putting that mailer in front of that person, that, that owner gives you an opportunity to not burn. I mean, I do some cold calling, but not a lot. Um, I'm just not comfortable with that yet. I, I think we did like 20 cold calls today. But um, it gets easier as you start doing the process. Well, if you did but, 20 cold calls today, I'd say you're pretty comfortable with it because I'm just trying to get people to take do one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we had help. I had, I had uh, Shelton over here, so he helped me quite a bit with some of the cold calling. And he's a very personal person. But what I like is when he called some of these, these return postcards, he, I could hear him in the background talking to these people, and they, they really, truly – thank us for reaching out to them. They were in a situation, um, most of those were pre-foreclosures that had already gone through the process and they were literally just moved out of the property and in another place. They didn't even know they still owned the house. And, you know, we're, we're there to give them options so we can kind of help them out of their situation. And um, everybody seems to benefit in these situations, just like your training states. I mean, you help a lot of people in the process. So, that's probably the exciting part of what we do. I mean, yeah, the money's there and the money's rolling in and it's kind of cool that you can pay your bills and do this, but, you know, having something to work towards is always fun. And, uh, you know, my family supports me in everything I do. Um, you guys are fantastic with your training and, and your support systems there at REI Pro is awesome. So with that type of team behind you, I don't see how you can fail. You just need to do it. We need to record this, you know, and this could be like a commercial for us, Bo. That, <laughs> that was pretty good. That was not even scripted. That was good. Um, I love it. I mean, you've done a wonderful job. I really, really hope you inspire that, that person just getting started um, to take action. I mean, that's what you did. And you never know when you take action, things that are going to come. <clears throat> and, uh, but I know if you don't take action, nothing's ever going to happen. Uh, right. Nothing's going to change. Nothing. I, and, uh, I read over 14 books in 2020 alone about real estate. And I read the four hour work week and, you know, rich dad, poor dad series. I mean, there's a ton of books out there that kind of guide you through getting into real estate investing. And so if, if there's anything where you're concerned about, just educate. You know, educate, absorb as much information as you can. There's a lot of stuff out there that's not so great. So just be careful, you know, what you read into. But, um, but I, I, I really enjoyed my venture in 2020. I can't wait for 2021 to, to just blow it out of the water. So, um, and you got that head start too, which is that's great. Right. Yeah. So, right. hey, if you guys um, want to reach out to Bobby, uh, we, we definitely wanted to share his information, um, especially if you know someone that wants to sell in South Carolina. Um, maybe you have deals uh, that you want to sell or maybe potential partnership. Um, Bobby is an awesome guy. Um, last week, I think we spent, what, three hours on the phone yeah. nonstop, yeah. Right. just reviewing things, analyzing things. And, um, you know, I trust him. If you're looking to, maybe you don't have all the time, but you have some resources, you might want to partner up. I, I would contact Bobby. He's, uh, you can see how many deals he's working on um, in that previous screen. There's his contact information. So reach out to him. Now, obviously, you know, take this for what it is, but 
Bobby's not like, you know, the personal coach there where he's going to answer everyone's questions. So don't get upset if you send him an email and ask, okay, what's this or what's that? Um, Bobby wants to do deals, right? And, um, and uh, maybe there's some partnerships there as well. So uh, thank you so much, Bobby, for being on and um, look forward to watching your success grow over this, this year. So awesome job. Great, thank you. Bobby. My pleasure. All right, I wanted to share some of the tools and systems we use in our business, and we keep it pretty simple here. Uh, but Microsoft Office, obviously, uh, just basic Word, um, Excel, obviously PowerPoint, things of that nature. Uh, MailChimp, we actually use for all of our email. And um, there's others out there. This is who we use. Um, for autoresponders, things of that nature. They just do a pretty good job. It's simple. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes things that I think, you know, you just can't start sending out bulk email from your private server. You know, you need somebody reputable. Somebody in the middle. Definitely. That can actually deliver this content. And uh, we, we rely on them. And obviously there's other companies that are similar out there as well. YouTube, Facebook. Um, uh, like we were talking about earlier. For our front, we call front end website, we use a product called Webflow. And uh, I, I don't know, Bo, is this really a, for a beginner? <laughs> you know, it's one How of those, you... <laughs> Webflow got started back in like 2008 and it was really more of a designer platform for people to just kind of do mock-ups. Uh, when I stumbled along with it, you know, it's kind of like you your Wix or your uh, Squarespace, some WordPress type right. stuff. But I found out from a programmer standpoint under the hood, there's a lot of things that you could do that, you know, REI Pro itself has a lot of professional tools that go in to build such a thing. They're also much more sophisticated, more time consuming. And it was just a drag and drop platform that was kind of a breath of fresh air to put some of these quicker pages together uh, to get your message out there. So yeah, we use it a lot for uh, these front ends or quicker page designs and things of that nature. I wouldn't say it's something that um, an absolute beginner could jump into. If you've got some technical background right. and want to watch the videos, you probably could. But other than that, you might want to look at some other platforms. Yeah, there's, I, I would definitely agree there are easier ones out there. But hey, people ask, mm. I'm delivering. This is what we mm. use. Um, Zapier we use as well. We also have this inside of REI Pro where you can integrate different sites and things of communication um, together via these different um, websites. So um, if you have, you know, call rail as an example, you can integrate that within REI Pro or, you know, a Google Doc, you know, something as simple as that to integrate. Zapier is going to uh, provide that for you. One of my favorite places, um, and we're not affiliated whatsoever with lead pages. This is a perfect landing page company. Now you do need to pretty much design it, but this is a very simple, um, I think it's simple. Um, uh, they are pretty big, um, but this is a great place for landing pages. So either a one page, I do understand they do have um, now more of some websites. Um, I'm not familiar with that part because we don't use them for that, but um, for landing pages for, you know, getting sellers to opt into a form, getting your buyers to opt into a form. I love lead pages. Everybody that registered for this webinar went to a lead page site that we designed. So it's very simple to use. And uh, I would highly recommend that for your websites. Um, landing pages. And of course, as you know, REI Pro software, and I won't make it look like a sales pitch, but REI Pro is paying us to put this on. <laughs> so I, Bo, you are going to take a minute just to talk about REI Pro, because I know there's a lot of people on here that maybe knew this is the first time you're here. And, um, you know, you, you can just go through just a little, yeah. we'll call it pitch, because that's what it is. Yep. So, you know, like we said, REI Pro's that 
single most really important tool that you really need to have in your toolbox. I know it's something that we rely on every single day. And really, it doesn't matter if you're just getting started in the business or you're an advanced real estate investor. You know, this is that one tool that really is for you. Uh, just real quick, some ways that it's going to help you without just reading off the screen there. But look, it's going to help you find your deals. Um, analyze these deals with multiple strategies, multiple profit centers, really to help you maximize what your outcome is going to be. Uh, it's going to help you with all the due diligence, the property research, comps, and yes, I did say comps, and it's in all 50 states, including your area. And if you live in an area that's a non-disclosure state, Texas being a big state, uh, you know, it's, it's illegal to give you the sold data. Well, we actually have the deals in place. We have the sold data. We're able to deliver it to you if you're in that non-disclosure state. Um, we can uncover all those hard to find cell phone numbers, contact information, makes multiple offers for you and really just you know a whole lot more. Um, so get ready. Look, REI Pro 2021, it's in its final stages of testing. We've been listening to you guys. We've packed in a lot more features. It's going to be more powerful, easier to use. It's got some more analytics. It's going to be awesome. Um, really just get out there and get your job done. So look forward to REI Pro 2021. It's coming soon. And the best part I'm going to say for last, everyone starts for free. So. Uh, of course, free is always better. That's right. So those of you that are on REI Pro, we have a like Bo said, version 2021 coming out. And uh, we, man, we, we have literally have taken hundreds and hundreds of suggestions by you guys. And, um, you know, how can we make it better for you? And we really brought those together. We talked about it. We obviously can only do so many. Um, we're doing some big changes with your suggestions as well as a couple of visual changes that are going to help set up for some bigger things that are coming as well. So anyways, thank you for that, Bo. I want to give you a few things to get started with. You know, those, and this is going to be great for someone that is just literally getting started. But as we talked about, I want you to understand your investment area, understand what's going on. I know a lot of investors in California, but they don't invest in California. They invest in other states. It's understanding those marketplaces of, you know, what are the prices in that um area? What do things rent for? What, uh, how many houses are up for sale currently? What's the average days on market? I want you to just start to begin to understand some of the basics of where you're going to invest. And I know for most of you, it's probably your backyard. Choose your investment strategy. Go back, listen to, you know, each strategy and find one to start with. Now, like I said, wholesaling is probably the easiest to learn. It's where I started. You heard Bobby. Um, this is where, you know, he's done numerous deals uh, using this strategy. You know, if you're looking for that beginner strategy with like zero risk almost, that's going to be your strategy. Those of you that have done some deals and you want to do other things, pick your strategy. I think that's the thing. You might continue the same strategy if you've been in real estate. You might be looking at this business in a whole new perspective after this, especially with the pre-foreclosure situation, we're getting ready to start. Um, you might want to learn that seller financing strategy combined with the pre-foreclosure training, and that's going to be your way. Develop a system. We have a system. I shared with you some of the tools, resources that we use to run our business. Obviously, REI Pro is going to help us manage all of our properties, contacts, buyers, and those things. But we also use some other things and tools and systems, you know, basic Excel spreadsheets for some people might be better than a Google Doc, or you might use lead pages as your landing page versus maybe an investor carrot, or maybe you like investor carrot and you don't like lead pages. The point is, is you're going to have to develop this basic system of, I need to find deals, I need to market deals, I need to work the deal, and I need to get them closed. Right, So start developing that system and build a basic marketing plan if you're just getting started. If, if you just started with REI Pro, just did direct mail, that could be your entire marketing plan right now. And that's it. As you start to make money in this business, yeah, could you expand your marketing, do other things? Absolutely. But start to build that basic marketing plan. It doesn't have to be complicated. Too many people are like, yeah, but I want to try voicemail drops and um, I want to do this and I want to do that. I, I think you did just keep it simple. And um, I, I would say direct mail. Most importantly, take 
action. Okay. This is where most people fail is they just don't do anything. And we want you to take action. That's what this system is here for. This education is here for is to help you take action. And um, with that being said, I think we're ready for some Q&A. Ready for some live Q&A. All right, yes. Down at the bottom of your screen there, you should see a Q&A box. Go ahead and click on that and you can type in your question. We do have a few questions coming in. Uh, let's see here. Donnie, what service do you use to skip trace LLCs? When I go to find cash buyers from a wholesale deal, most of them are LLCs and they won't skip trace. Are there any suggestions? Yeah, LLCs are kind of tricky um, because most of the skip trace services are looking for an individual that lives at a particular address. Now, one of the things that I do, and I've done it a lot, and I've actually got some luck with, especially if the LLC sounds like it's somebody's last name, I'll just put in that last name. The other thing you can do, you can go to the county, uh, your county's business search or the state search and find out who the registered agents are um, for that LLC and then use the address maybe that's on the registered agent's address. A lot of that stuff's public information. You can just grab it and use those names and I'm able to get them that way. Yeah, usually LLCs don't get cell phone numbers. That's usually the individual, right. um, but you can put it under your company name. It's just rare. And I think that's why it might be, a, you just gotta, who moved the cheese, right? Okay, if I can't do this, what do I do? I, I actually like the research of the corporate uh, the corporation, the LLC, whatever business entity it is to find the owner. Um, yep. I do like that. All right. Uh, from Stamina. Hello. I got a three-part question here. Number one, do I need a license to wholesale and flip properties? Number two, once I find a property, what if I don't find a buyer and what are some resources I can use to locate buyers inside of REI Pro? And number three, do I need to get a lawyer to cover myself just in case? So the Is, first one, do you need a license to wholesale? So I'm going to say no, because that applies to just about every state. Okay. There are going to be realtors that tell you, you need a license. Keep in mind, a licensed agent follows the rules and regulations that the state provides for realtors, not investors. <clears throat> There's always that conflict, Ohio being, you know, the first one is, okay, can we do this or not type of thing. Other than that, wholesaling is going to be fine. Number Second two, question. part of your question, I remembered actually all the questions. You did, okay. Um, so, you know, if you can't find a buyer, the one clause that you have to have in your contract is going to be that subject to clause that we actually put in our contracts that you can download for free in REI Pro. And that contract, it's a one page contract I would use for every single wholesale deal, period. And we have used this and I'm not gonna say every state, but pretty close to every state. You are more than welcome to have your attorney look at it. I just don't think it's required at this where this contract is, I, I, thousands of deals have been done on this one contract. I know I've personally done several hundred with this contract in seven states. And it has all the basic requirements that you're going to need, including the disclosures in case you can't find a buyer. Can you legally back out with that disclosure? Absolutely. That was all, all right. of them, right? Yep. Okay. Next one from uh, Ronald. Do you consider it overkill or bothersome to cold call a homeowner that you've direct mailed? No, um, I don't consider it. I would only consider that if I looked at it from a personal point of view. I always try to look at it from a business point of view, like my business is, is doing the work. Um, I think from a personal, you might think, well, I don't want to be bothered. I already <laughs> sent them something. I don't know if I should bother you. You have to, I think you have to draw the line between the personal feelings and business feelings. I would call and simply do more of a follow-up call. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm not sure if you received my postcard that I, that I sent you. Um, just wanted to do a quick follow-up with you. I am a local investor looking to buy properties in the area and just happened to notice you might be interested in selling whatever the situation may be, but that's kind of a, 
a good line. So use it as a follow-up call to what you've already mailed. Yep. And most likely, you know, you could have, you could have a oh, I didn't receive anything. Well, I'm glad I got you on the phone. Um, I noticed the property, you know, and so on. So I, I wouldn't look at that as being, I think if you called four or five times and left a voicemail, that would, but uh, not, not after you sent a mailing. No. Uh, Peyton, good evening. How do we find out if a homeowner has an FHA mortgage? Well, you can pull that up right inside of REI Pro, go to the mortgages tab. You'll see the current mortgages and also the historical mortgage, but on that current mortgage, um, most of the time there's a column there that says what type of mortgage it is. It can say conventional, it can say FHA, it can say a home equity line of credit, but that'll be there um, on the mortgages tab on a property. Yeah, what do we get about, is it about 80% maybe? I think so. Around there of the around US there. properties that we'll get mortgage data from. Yep. Uh, Ronald, do you rank direct mail above cold calling? I do. Um, even today, I could do a pretty good phone call because I've done so many of them. But I think direct mail is that, I don't know, it's not as blunt. You know, it's not as forward. It's, and it's always, always better if this, you know, the potential seller calls you. Because now they're showing, they're taking the initiative, right? So they're showing at least some interest. Um, they're thinking about it now. There are times where I might call and I'll be, hi, my name is Chris. I was driving around, just happened to notice this property. It appeared to be vacant. I was just curious to see if you'd be interested in selling it. And they're going, uh, no. Like, why would you be calling me? And then after you get off the phone, they start thinking, well, maybe I do need to sell that property. <laughs> Where direct mail piece, if you hit them with that at least first, use the phone call as a, as a follow-up, as I mentioned already. I mean, I go direct mail because I can also hit a lot more. Now, it's if it's that specific like property that's around in my neighborhood that, oh my gosh, yes, I'm going to pick up the phone and just direct access but when I look at it from a bulk point of view, you really <clears throat> probably should just send direct mail. So um, pre foreclosures for sure, send direct mail, either a postcard letter or something um, that needs to be um, direct mail for sure. But like I said, if there's a few properties that are around, like Bobby said, he made what, 20 calls today, but he's sending out 2,500 mailers a month. So 